Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who's in kind of a loud house today. My son's getting ready to go to Paris, so uh, it's a little bit of noise, but don't worry. It's going to be a good review. I'm going to be reviewing a wonderful album called A Wonderful Letter by J-Rock. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of different J-Rocks out there. This isn't the J-Rock that's with TDE and Kendrick. This isn't the J-Rock, if you know what I'm saying, from the Trailer Park Boys. This is the J-Rock, who is a very famous LA DJ. I say very famous in the terms of, if you know a lot about turntablists, you know who J-Rock is. I have to admit, before I did this video, before I stumbled blindly upon this album, I had never heard of J-Rock. Now, I want to, before I get into the video, I want to talk a little bit, because most of my audience is young, you know, and, and because I'm in my 40s, most of my audience is in their 20s, I think it's useful for me to talk a little bit about, about back in my day. But I never say that things were better, just things were different. And I want to talk about, like, why I love and why I hate the internet and computers. I mean, if I love turntablists, if I, if I fiend so much to hear good scratching and DJing and I just never hear it in modern hip hop, just barely ever, barely, barely, barely ever. And all these DJs are coming up with fake ass digital slow down to tempo match DJs. These aren't DJs. I mean, DJs who are, that's what DJs mean to me. And theoretically, that was killed by the computer, killed by, the inability to monetize such a skill. But I want to flip it on its head a little bit and, and say that the fact that I found this album by a great turntablist, by a great DJ, a spectacular album out of an underground artist from LA who's been around since 1992, been around for 30 years, but still managed to avoid my attention all this time, points to the beauty of the internet. You see, I want to take you back all the way back okay, to, uh, to the early 2000s, the late 1990s when I, I loved hip hop, I loved rap music. I did, but, but what do I do with that? Like, I can listen to Jam in 94.5, I lived in Boston, Massachusetts, I can listen to Jam in 94.5 for today's hottest hip hop and R&B, but it's all gonna be pop stuff. I might every once in a while get like that Beat Nuts song. Do -do 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 -do. I'll be psyched about that, or I might get Jay-Z, or I might get Big Punisher, but beyond that, it's all going to be Aaliyah, if you're lucky, and Brandy, and just a whole bunch of R&B stuff. Let me, let me see that thong. Another great song I learned to love. So, like, if you're like me, and, and you're in your early 20s, and it's the late 1990s, and you want to find some good turntablists, you're screwed. The only thing you could do is what I did, which is find an underground record store. So I found a record store called Biscuit Head Records in Boston. It's right there on, on like, uh, it's at the top of Newberry Street. It's on Park, maybe, maybe over there. Kind of go up to a second floor, and I'm scared out of my mind because I'm not like a hip-hop guy, and I don't really know. I don't, I'm not, I don't have a backpack. I don't do graffiti. I don't understand. I don't speak the lingo. And I just say, turntables? <laughs> I want to hear... And that's what you had to do. You had to be lucky enough to know there's a place to go. And when I went, the guy told me to buy this album, which I've had in my collection since 1998 or whenever the hell it came out. Yeah, since 1998, I've had this DJ Faust album. Great album. Some very, very good. Some of these other guys are featured on there as well. You know, very famous international DJs. But that was it. That was it. I moved out of Boston, I had no idea. I had nowhere to go, I had nowhere to find anything. So yes, the internet sucks, and the globalization of everything sucks, and computers suck. But you, you, can watch me tell you to listen to J-Rock, a wonderful letter. For whatever reason, you've chosen to watch this 44-year-old French professor in Western New York tell you what's good music, Statistically, a little under, like, uh, in between 500 and 700 of you are going to watch this video. Thank you very much. Thunderground Thursday is where I review albums that are less visible. I get less clicks, but the clicks that I get mean more. So thank you. And please leave a comment so more people see it. Please smash the like bucket so more people see it. Please subscribe so I get more subscribers. Join the subreddit. 
don't go on my TikTok yet. I don't know. I still don't know how to do TikTok. <laughs> but you know, like you can discover this album. If you want to hear some really well constructed, like very West Coast hip hop, some like with like shades of like funk and shades of G funk and shades of the underground and great turntablism and like the kind of because the thing that I wanted, I didn't want super technical, you know, just unbelievable uh, expertise. I didn't want stuff that was going to like blow my mind. I wanted excellent, excellent instrumental music based on hip hop and funk and samples and lots of weird quotes of people saying like, I don't know what time it is. You know, like weird little quotes like that. If you want that, like I wanted that in 1998 when I went up to Biscuit Head Records, you don't have to go to Biscuit Head Records. You can go to Muffin Head Records. <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. I had this, this I had like a bowl haircut <laughs> and all the jocks, the jocks. They'd see me walk down the hallway and they'd say, hey, it's Muffin Head. So feel free to call me a Muffin Head in the comments. So that's what this album is. And that's what this video is. Im imploring you to check out this album, J-Rock, A Wonderful Letter. I will say, as far as I can tell what little research I've done, there is the ghost of J. Dilla all over this album. Apparently J-Rock worked with J. Dilla. Most of the people who are on this, when you look up the biographies on the first sentence, it says that they worked with J. Dilla. I have to say something. I, I don't know anything about J. Dilla. So you just hit the down button. You just hit the down the down button. Because if you're watching this video and you love underground hip hop and I'm acting out here like I'm Mr. Professor Man who knows everything, you, you, you think that I should know J. Dilla. And, and I don't blame you. I'm going to remind you what it, what it says on my mug here. Ignorance is profound. In between the years of 2002 and 2018, I was shut off from the force. I didn't listen to new music at all. I didn't pay attention to anything. I just had kids, went to grad school, etc. I suffered mid-twenties music death. So the entire explosion of Jay Dilla, and then his tragic passing, and then the resurgence, and all of the producers who followed him, and named him, and the whole thing. Had I been 10 years younger, <clears throat> I would have the complete Jay Dilla discography. But as it is, I looked it up, and I hate to say it, but I'm kind of a Jay Dilla hipster. Because I liked Jay Dilla before he was cool. I didn't know who he was. But this album, secretly probably a top 20 hip-hop album of all time, Stakes is High by De La Soul. Unbelievable. If you ever want to say, like, Sky, what are some records that you'd suggest that I might not know? Stakes is High by De La Soul. I don't even know if it's streaming. Buy it online. Maybe like 10 bucks. Get the CD. You don't have a CD player? Get a CD player. And the best song on this album is one of the few songs not produced by De La Soul themselves called Stakes is High that has this insane... Do, 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 this crazy bass. So it turns out I do know Jay Dilla. He produced one of my favorite tracks of that decade. But let's get back to J-Rock, A Wonderful Letter. I'm going to include a stamp. That's my example song. I'll have you click on the banana up there if you want to listen to the song. It's called Welcome Everyone. I, I just want more songs like this. Like, if I could... I would have an entire song of this kind of, of this kind of thing, where you have a DJ who's mixing together all sorts of weird sounds, Eastern sounds, Western sounds, modern sounds, funk, unplaceable samples with lots of weird talking. Welcome everybody, time to start the show, all of that kind of stuff. You know, I'm thinking like it, like the beginning of Welcome to the Terror Dome, produced by the Bomb Squad for Public Enemy, like that kind of thing where you just have all these words and all these sounds going. And then at a certain point in this song, Welcome Everyone by, by J-Rock, we have like a toaster from, from Jamaica, you know, say, hey everybody, blah, 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 blah. and then we get this like drop, and then we have this like funky beat, and there's so many different layers, and then this album has, has the ability to do something which I really like, which is just have little quotes that will get stuck in your head forever. The sounds that you will hear will be devastating to your ear. Just awesome. And then somehow he finds a piano solo, or he plays a piano solo, I don't know, but this whole song does a thing that, that hip hop and to a lesser extent sort of like boom bap techno used to be able to do. Just create head nodding till you snap your neck music. Some subtle scratching in the back and the little piano anthem 
that little piano lead leads right into the next song, LA Anthem, with some random voice saying, to the pride in my city. And then we get to the song LA Anthem, where they scratch up different people saying things about Los Angeles. Here we have the first guest rappers, <clears throat> LMNO and Key Cool. I like these guys. Uh, they're goofy. Like, they're goofy in that good old school way. You see, I'm going to sound like an old head again. But hip-hop used to allow itself to be a lot more goofy than it allows itself to be. Like, now if you're goofy, you have to be mean, right? God damn, I sound old. Jeez. Oh, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I don't edit my videos, so I'm just going to keep going on this same path. Kids today, when they're, I'm going to do this in a full Bill Cosby voice for reason to see. Kids today, they just want the memeing and the beaming. Like, that's what the kids want today. Hashtag cancel Professor Sky. Like, that's what they want. Like, jokes that can be memed. Like, kind of goofy with a purpose. You know, like the hotline bling thing and even Kanye using, you know, Mr. Gobble Gobble the Gook, all that stuff. Um, but hip hop used to just kind of be goofy. Like, there just used to be just sort of a fair amount of, like, on, a, on an album, they're just, one of the best examples is Run DMC, you know, one of the greatest hip-hop bands. They have so many songs, and they're just plain goofy. Like, like you talk too much. <laughs> like, like, that was probably one of my favorite rap songs growing up, and it's a totally goofy song. You talk too much, you never shut up, you know? So this is a song about L.A., but I love it because, you know, it talks about police brutality and it talks about where they're from. But then also, I lived in L.A. for, for a couple of years. And it's just kind of a real L.A. thing, you know? Like, like at a certain point, they talk about traffic and it's like, you better know what time it is and what side streets to take. And it's true. Like, you got to figure out, like, like, when to take Western, when to take Santa Monica. Like, there's all these different, like, weird things that pop up in your head where you figure out, like, which side streets do you take at what time to avoid traffic. It's bizarre. It's a totally different, it's like a totally different way of, of, of seeing streets. And so that's the LA anthem that we have here. It's not just, like... Crips and Bloods and, and South Central and Inglewood. It's also just kind of a goofy, fun song about L.A., which even I, a goofy white dude who lived in L.A. as a goofy white dude, was am able to relate to. Talks about gentrification, talks about being on the fast pass, talks about the Anaheim Angels constantly trying to, to take the name Los Angeles. It's a great song, and it does what a lot of old school hip-hop can do, which is be serious and funny at the same time while being absolutely fun to listen to. A weird kind of guitar outro leads into the song One, which has a very cool, like, uh, sampled voice. Kind of like an ominous Black Sabbath style feel, because it has this, like, bass line and, like, the sounds of wind. It's almost like a horror track. Next song is No Bad Drugs. I said I'd get back to Bill Cosby. Uh, so he, he quotes Bill Cosby talking about drugs. Um, uh, Here comes the drug pusher, or something like that. And it's, uh, it's another thing that I can't really explain to you if you're younger than 40, 35 maybe. Uh, the importance of Bill Cosby's comedy specials. Like how important his stand-up comedy was. How much we all knew every single line from every single one of his jokes. So to hear this is quite, is, it's interesting. Because obviously Bill Cosby is a terrible human being who did terrible things and should be in jail. But also a very, very funny guy with a great voice and the way it's sampled here is great. Now the whole thing is sort of like an ode to pot and sort of an ode to drugs. And if you watch this channel, you know, I don't, I don't like drugs. You know, sometimes people say like, hey Sky, how do I get to be like you when I grow up? Uh, <laughs> don't do drugs. Uh, do do therapy. And uh, uh, yeah, just love your brain. That's, that's the main thing. Little girl likes her brain. Next song is called, but doesn't matter. With a song like this, I don't care. I'll keep listening to this song. It's a great song. Love and Dope featuring someone named Med, which is how you say honey in Serbo-Croatian. And this is cool because it follows well. So we had the song No Bad Drugs, which sort of feels like a stoner anthem. But then we have a song that draws a fun parallel between love and drugs. And this is where I'm talking about that goofy stuff. The song is kind of goofy. But it's a funny idea and it's carried out to its extreme with this great sample, some sell love and some sell dope, about the correlation between them and how you feel when you're high and how you feel when you're in love. 
it's just a good idea that's a little bit goofy, very well executed. The changing world, uh, this is a great example of, of a kind of production that I wish there was more of as well. Um, where we just had this, this, this quote over and over again in sync with the universe, just this line over and over again. And every once in a while, I will make reference to this very famous underground hip hop album, uh, Dr. Ar <laughs> Dr. Arctogynecologist by Dr. Arctogon, uh, which is just a great album. And I'll often quote Controlled by Gamma Light, which is just a line that's quoted uh, and scratched up quite a bit on this album. It's a thing that hip hop, definitely underground hip hop, does more than mainstream hip hop, but just being able to have like a line that, that you take with you. You know, like, so, like I took the line controlled by Gamma Light. I don't know who said it. I don't know where it's sampled. I haven't looked it up on whosampled.com. You tell me in the comments if you want. You, you sample snitch, I don't care. But like with a line like this in sync with the universe, like as I'm gonna to get to, uh, I bought the album. I bought it on Bandcamp. It's coming in the mail. I look forward to it. I'm gonna be listening to this album and I get the feeling that like when I'm feeling good, I'll just, I'll just a little part of me, a little part of my head will go, I'm in sync with the universe. Great descending organ. The, the, the rapper's name is Koreatown Oddity, which is just great. It's another very LA thing because if you live in LA, Koreatown is a very important place. It's a great place to go. Not just great food, but there's a lot of different things you can do there that are fun and interesting. It can be kind of sketchy. It can be kind of swanky all at the same time. Um, the main thing that we used to do there is we'd go and get food and then we would go to the nighttime driving ranges. They have like these crazy golf driving ranges like in the middle of the night, very bizarre. Probably my favorite rapper on the album, Koreatown Oddity. I didn't know any of the rappers on the album before coming here. Um, he has a very, very smooth voice, very clear. And again, sort of in that old school mode. Next song is called Keep On Yeah. Uh, Keep On Rockin' All Scratched Up. That, kind of hyped up music. It's a cool like sloppy drum line on this hi-hat with like a disjointed piano line, almost abstract, a very rough guitar strum. Just what a palette. <laughs> Just what a palette of sounds that he's able to put up here. Eventually he puts in with like Jump Up the Boogie, a kind of more famous quote, and kind of a cool spoken coolness at the end. Just the, the whole, you know, I listened to this album five, six times to prepare it for this video. And the more I listen to it, the more I just really come to appreciate just the layers and the palette, like the choices that he is making in terms of the instruments that he's using and how they sound, like this disjointed piano line, this sloppy drum thing, the rough guitar strum, you know, it all comes together in a way that doesn't sound like anything else to me. It, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like anything else. You know, you don't listen to it and immediately go, oh, this is absolutely revolutionary. I never heard anything like this before, but I've never heard anything like this before. Unlike the next song, Flawless, the raw version, which has almost a sort of reinterpretation of uh, um, Jungle Boogie. Sorry, I was trying to think of the song. Um, but, you know, with this like nice extended bass line, very West Coast funk sounding. Has a guy named Frank Nitt, who I guess worked a lot with Jay Dilla on here. Uh, he has a very good verse. Uh, he references Shut Up and Dribble. I've talked about it a couple times on this channel. The expression Shut Up and Dribble is the face of mainstream racism in America. Okay? So there's underground racism, which is obviously very dangerous, and, and we can identify that, and that has its, its own dog whistles. But that sportscaster telling LeBron James to shut up and dribble, like that really needs to be in our, in our minds as a sentence that was said and was accepted by 70% of our country. I don't know how much of our country accepted it, but it was 70% too much. A beautiful, <laughs> in the middle of the song, there's just this quote of this just old sounding guy saying, I'm ready to go. Now crank this emmer effer up. Just great. It has this awesome beat change with like, I don't know, like a Rachmaninoff piano break, but then a bluesy addition to the piano. A funny line, antidote for the masses, but they'd still just rather be staring at silicone asses. Uh, cool kind of like, um, next song is called Flawless Again, but it's called uh, Smoothed Out. And this has a talk box on it, you know, kind of like the California. <laughs> So it's cool. It's sung by someone named Budgie. It's nice. The sound on this, though, like you're so busy listening to the, to the talk box sound that you might not notice the bass drum sound. The bass drum sound is U, G, 
L-Y. It does not have an alibi. It's a very ugly bass sound. A great ugly bass sound. It sounds like an old beat up bass drum you find in the trash. And sometimes you find bass drums in the trash. I, I, had, a, I had a basement full of them because you just, you just walk around Alston, Massachusetts and you see a, you see a bass drum on it. Oh, I'll grab that. And then you pick it up and you have it home. Like an old bass drum with no drum head on the back. That's how it sounds. Tuned poorly. It's a great, great sound. I don't know where he found it. I don't know how he made it. But you mix that together with this talk box. It's a very satisfying sound. Next song is called All I Want to Do Remix. It's a remix of the Shell Crow song. It's not. It's a bad joke. That's a bad joke. So I'm trying to find... I had something else here I was going to use as a prop. Ah, I found it. Not yet. So All I Want to Do is featuring Steve Arrington. And I haven't actually heard of Steve Arrington or of his group, but he is a funk pioneer. A little bit of research uh, from Cleveland who, you guessed it, worked with Jay Dilla. Uh, I think I need to look up this guy's work more because he sounds great on here. I love, I mean, there's so much to learn about funk, you know? I mean, like, 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 I, like I try to learn so much about funk music and then I realize that like, I barely even have scratched the surface on the Ohio Players catalog, much less Steve Arrington. So much to learn, so, so much to do. Um, it's a very mellow song, very long, but there's a great, like beat change, and then there's basically the best drums on the album. There are parts of this album that remind me very favorably of DJ Shadow. Like these drums on here have that DJ Shadow feeling where it feels like it's just a great drummer playing, and that's a high compliment. Commercial Break has kind of a sh channel changing sound, and essentially we're just getting ready for the next song. We're getting ready for Pajama Problem. This Commercial Break is announcing the next song, Pajama Problem? That cannot be the title. I think it's called Pajama Party. So on my notes, it says Pajama Problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess <laughs> that it's Pajama Party. This is featuring Egyptian Lover. Now, I don't know how much you know about old school hip hop. I'm gonna go back into the past and tell you in the 90s, I was trying to piece together what old school hip hop was. I grew up and I had exposure to Run DMC, and the Fat Boys, and the Skinny Boys, Kwame the Legend, uh, EPMD, Bismarcky. That was it. That's basically all I had, exp like everything else I had to fill in. I had to fill in Eric B and Rakim. I had to fill in Curtis Blow. I had to fill in all these other things. Figures like Egyptian Lover, who you still might not have heard of. In order to do it, like I bought CDs like this. Hip Hop Greats, made by Rhino. Compilation so great, they gave me two booklets with it. I was shocked this morning to discover that Egyptian, Egyptian Lover is not on here. I could have swore he was on here. It's got Sugar Hill Gang, Fat Boys, Grandmaster Flash, UTFO, Nucleus, Run DMC, Sequence, Curtis Blow. I could have swore that Egyptian Lover was on here, but he wasn't. Which just means at some point, in my past, I came across the song Egyptian Lover. It was on some compilation somewhere. The song is called Egypt, Egypt by Egyptian Lover. It's a very important song in West Coast hip hop. I have no idea where I heard it, but <laughs> the song is so catchy, Egyptian Lover. I mean, Egypt, Egypt by Egyptian Lover, that when I hear the word Egypt, just Egypt, just in my daily life, when I hear the word Egypt, I think, Egyptian lover, Egyptian lover, baby, Egyptian lover. Like, like the whole thing happens in my head. So Egyptian lover is a very important and influential early rap artist from Los Angeles, back in the old days before NWA changed up what it meant to be from LA. NWA and Ice-T, right? So like when you see pictures of Dr. Dre and he's all dressed up in the funny clothes and everyone makes fun of him for being like, you know, looking like he's in the village people, he's not. He's looking like Africa Bambata. Africa Bambata, one of the founders of hip hop, who really focused on a more sort of techno sounding, a more electronic style hip hop. That ended up really influencing simultaneously the hip hop that was being made in Paris. Another part, another side, side point there. And the hip hop that's being made in LA. 
So Egyptian, Egypt, Egypt by Egyptian Lover is this very Africa Bambata-esque song that was huge, that influenced LA. And I love the fact that Egyptian Lover is on this song because here we have an, a, a hero of West Coast hip hop from the 80s with a hero from West Coast hip hop from the 90s and the 2000s, working together in the 2022, making a song that just sounds a lot like Egypt, Egypt, with some creepy sex lyrics, cool computerized voices, great little quotes from different people, take your hands off my, oh, why didn't you say so? All these cool little quotes here. And you know, you might as well get on the Egyptian lover bandwagon now, because eventually, I'm positive, I've never been more sure of anything in my life, Kendrick Lamar is going to do a song with Egyptian Lover because Kendrick Lamar cares about hip hop history. He cares about the past. He cares a lot about Los Angeles. And there's no way he's going to pass up doing a song with Egyptian Lover. So next song is called Go. Cool fluttering piano and and uh, like cool fluttering piano line with a guitar over it, very pulsing synth. It's sort of laid back for a song that's called Go and it features one, two, three, go. You think that a song that has one, two, three, go is gonna be like, yeah, but it's actually pretty mellow. There's a really crazy moment on here where these curling sounds with the piano and the guitar just like meld together. They're just like, 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 like just, just curled together. Like they're spooning. I don't know how to describe it, but you just have to listen. And then we get this sort of boots and cats and boots and cats intro. And then we have a return of the rest of the instruments and it's beautiful. Next song is called Dancing with the Beat. Subtly, one of the most complicated rap instrumentals I've ever heard. It starts off at the, the end of the previous track saying, let me count it out for you. But then the sample that comes in is this weird jazz sample that's matched with a dance beat. I don't know how he does it. Expert level syncing. And it develops really amazingly to the point where there's these doubled horn lines and at the end of the line, like the, the sample sort of doubles up on itself and it's like slightly dissonant and it's rhythmically extremely complicated. It is amazing work. It is just amazing, amazing work. Really have a listen to Dancing with the Beat because it's subtle enough that you might not pick it up. The end of the album is called The End. Give me some of that nighttime patter, a kind of chopped up voice, a little bit, I guess, screwed down voice, I don't know, some piano, a very mellow outro for a very great full album experience. So that is my review of this great album. As I said, my Patreons give me money every month and I use that money to buy music. So I bought the album. And I think you should too. Or definitely at least listen to it. Because you don't need to go to Biscuit Head when you got Professor Muffinhead. I, I, I regret saying that. I've been saying that a lot lately. Okay. Till next time, there's the camera.